Raymond O. Fulton, yes. always known to friends as Dick. Um, he <coughs> had been a, a post office official uh, in his younger days, uh, and he served in the First World War. And he was rather, if you look at his uh, photograph in my obituary of him, he uh, was rather military in aspect, and he had rather sort of military voice. A little bristly moustache and uh, rather tubby. Um, uh, but he was a very, very gentle and sweet character, really. And uh, he got this fascination with uh, Egyptology and uh, um, uh, took himself over to Germany and uh, uh, took classes with. Zeta, etc. When he was a man in his thirties uh, or forties, uh, and um, he developed a very beautiful hieroglyphic hand, as you uh, probably know. Uh, and Gardner took him on as his amanuensis, and he spent years and years working with Gardner and uh, producing all the plates of Gardner's publication. Most of those plates uh, are, are uh, autographed by Fulton. Um, <coughs> uh, anyway, uh, e eventually uh, um, Gardner was older than Faulkner and eventually uh, he, he retired from Gardner's service. I mean, very amicably, Gardner just uh, wasn't doing any of that sort of work anymore. Uh, and um, uh, at that time, <coughs> uh, 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 Cherney occupied University College position after Glanville went to Cambridge, which was in 1946 until 51. But he was never very happy in London for various reasons, and as you know, he went to Oxford. And that was when, uh, uh, mainly on Stephen Glanville's recommendation, Brian Emery was appointed to the chair. And Brian Emery had no language competence at all, uh, so it became uh, an alcohol. Uh, as I said, who was mainly a Sudanese scholar anyway, was uh, entirely bound up with the museum. <coughs> uh, so uh, Faulkner was brought in as a part-time uh, lecturer uh, in Egyptian language. And he lived in his lovely little cottage in Woodbridge in Suffolk and he used to come in for two or three nights a week and lodge in one of those hotels uh, in that street by the side of the British Museum. Yeah, and uh, he had a he had a dicky heart, and by the time I got to the department in uh, 1963, uh, he was already over 70. Yes, uh, I mean he was retired when he, when he came to the department, which was in uh, yes, as I say, 51. Uh, so he was already in his 60s then. Um, uh, but he was a, a very, he was a very, very good uh, hieroglyphic and hieratic uh, scholar, and uh, um, his publications are, are still very valuable. You know, he, he really did produce uh, good translations and uh, uh, handleable editions of uh, Egyptian funerary texts for the general public and uh, in good English and. Uh, I think they're admirable, uh, and he he, he was uh, uh, for those who uh, could take the course uh, um, a good teacher. Uh, but he did have this sort of rather stiff uh, military manner, uh, so that he 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 barked a bit. <laughs> he didn't mean any harm by. Um, but uh, uh, also, uh, you know, he'd been worked with Gardner for years and years. So, uh, for students who had no um, uh, previous language study behind them, uh, uh, to be pitched into reading hieroglyphic texts with, and doing hieroglyphic grammar with Dick Faulkner uh, was probably rather a. <laughs> Um, a hefty experience. I mean, if, if you talk to someone like Janine Burio or um, Rosalind David or um, uh, others of 
that uh, sort of ilk, uh, that they would uh, uh, tell you more. Some of them were a bit frightened of him, I think, um, because he was a mount of erudition. But, uh, you know, he was a, de a delightful colleague, and uh, I used to go and have the odd beer and lunch with him, and Hazel and I used to go down and see him in his cottage in Woodbridge once a year and take him out to lunch. Uh, that was after his retirement from UC, which was in 67, I think. Um, but uh, no, he, he was a delightful colleague. <laughs>